Hi, thanks for checking out another edition of our new show called Space Alert. Uh, the Global Network was created in 1992 to stop the arms race from moving into space. Our guests this time are two of our dear friends from Sweden, Agneta Norberg, who's on the board of the Global Network, and Eva Johansson. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And, and just we, to mention, Johnson, Eva Johnson. We, Johnson. Yes. We, we also uh, are grateful to uh, Global Network board member Will Griffin for doing all the tech work to make the show possible. So let's start with each of you uh, giving us a bit about uh, yourselves. Agneta, you want to go first? Yes, I'm Agneta Norberg. I am proud to be a grandmother and grand grandmother of four, no, six children. I am the board of uh, Glo Glo yes, the board in the directors of Global Network Against Weapons and Nuclear Power in Space. And I am also the chair of Swedish Peace Council. All right, Eva. Yes, and my name is Eva Johnson. I am a retired teacher. I'm also a grandmother. <laughs> I am a member of uh, Women for Peace in Kiruna, which is, Kiruna is north of the Polar Circle. And uh, we are, unfortunately, many of us have died. And uh, as you know, young people nowadays, they are not in groups, they act in other ways, but we still, we're still going on. Well, congratulations, and we're glad you are. Um, Agneta, um, Sweden has long had an international reputation as being a very peaceful, neutral, and non-aligned country up in the North region. Uh, is that still the situation today? Well, I'm sad to say it's not the situation anymore. On the contrary, I have to give a rather long answer to the question. Earlier in my long life, when uh, traveling abroad, people greeted me when I say, I am from Sweden. Oh, Sweden! I said, I have to say, ah, uh, it's not that way anymore. So what has happened? Well, Sweden as a reputation have had many important and outspoken representatives as the United Nations. I think it's therefore we were so popular. I want to mention Doug Hammarskjöld as the UN General Secretary who was killed in, in Andola. And also Agda Russell, my Britain, Alva Myrdal, but above all, Swedish Prime Minister Olof Palme, who also was tragically tragic, was killed. Uh, he was world famous. But during the almost 40 years since the Swedish foreign minister was killed, Swedish policy has gradually gradually, totally change. And the important steps toward, uh, was when Sweden joined Partnership for Peace in 1994, which is an anti-chamber to NATO, and later became member of European Union in 1995. Even installations of different kinds are supporting the US war machine I want to highlight S-Range, the world's biggest downloading station from satellites, which now is enlarging. It will most probably be able to send or launch many satellites for military use. Another embarrassing fact is that Sweden hosts the world's third largest listing station close to Stockholm, FRA on Leuven. It controls Russian cables and is in close cooperation with the National Security Agency in Fort Meade. All this according to Edward Snowden revelation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Eva, your community hosted our Global Network annual meeting in 2013 in your community, Kiruna, in northern Sweden. 
Could you talk about why we were invited and what that meant uh, to your group there at the time? Yes, at the time, we are still talking about it. Uh, we, it meant quite a lot to us as a group and uh, also other members of, of Women for Peace all over Sweden. <clears throat> so it was very important from that point of view. Uh, we are, unfortunately, as Agneta says, uh, we have S-Range with us, which is uh, partly, I don't know how much private it is, but it is... Um, owned by the by the by, by the state but they, they are enlarging and uh, uh, what is a problem for us is that we uh, they don't write anything about it in the newspapers the newspapers they don't tell us uh, much about the the um, ac exercises and they don't they don't uh, i probably because they don't know the journalists don't know themselves they are not engaged in this and and um, so they don't know but on the whole as um, as an, an answer to what happened after is that we are still going on we still do what we can and uh, to to keep up the spirit because that was a very good meeting and uh, and uh, it it has kept us uh, helped us keep going also. Yeah? Can, you talk, can you talk about uh, Eva just a bit more about um, the kind of activities that you're aware of that are happening there at S Range, which is a huge area where they launch various things and they have. Uh, I guess drones and other other uh, other testing of other uh, military uh, equipment as well, right? Yes, they. <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> they don't talk much about it. And as I said, they never write anything in the newspaper. So if if you want to know anything, you have to uh, you have to. Uh, try to find out yourself and they don't let out much news and uh, for uh, for instance when it was um, uh, when they were started talking about changing the temp the, the climate with they were going to send some particles into the space and and that uh, when that was that was uh, when that idea was left not until then did we find did they write about a, a very small article in the newspaper, but otherwise they, there is no news and we we really have to dig, and uh, they they now they are talking about having those small satellites and it, everything is very full of secrets. So uh, that is a, that is a, a that is a shame really, because I mean. Uh, we are all. We are. It will. It will um, uh, happen to us all if something happens there, and everything which is being built up happens to the whole of Sweden. But we are very. Most people are quite ignorant about this. I'd say but they, they. 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 They don't. They don't seem to care. And if I say, if, if we start talking about people about the small satellites, and many think it's good. Because it it gives publicity to Kiruna, publicity to S Range, people have work and so on, and and um, they 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 are not so um, troubled, I'd say. All right, uh, Agneta, uh, hmm? let's, let's talk about NATO just a bit. Uh, what is the U.S. NATO agenda for Sweden, Norway, Finland, and Denmark, and also? I remember that uh, Jimmy Carter's national security advisor, Zbigniew Brzezinski, his son, <laughs> Mike, was, his yeah. son was for Terrible. a while the U.S. ambassador, right, to Sweden, yeah. and he was one of those who was twisting the arm of Sweden to join NATO. Correct? I'm not sure if he was twisting the arm. I will mention that, or I'm not sure I mentioned it before, but. To kill Olof Palme was the first step. I don't uh, say that Mike Brzezinski did it, but it was. It has come uh, revealed that there were um, rather hidden agenda to to get rid of Olof Palme. So, but he eventually died. The one who was very suspicious. So there was a plan, and. Um, uh, the secret NATO uh, installations, our uh, organizations in all Europe, was, was most probably 
behind this. It is called Stay Behind. All those uh, install um, preparation. If the Russians come, we will do this. They were called Stay Behind. And the office where Olof Palm was murdered was just exactly beside the murder place. But as I said, he died of age. So they have dropped the case, but there is uh, sort of a, there are people who say we have to, we can't stop to investigate this. We have to continue. So there we are. But you told, you said that you wanted me to talk about the Nordic countries. And I have prepared here a little piece about um, that Sweden joined host nation support to NATO. It sounds very cozy, support to NATO, host nation, yes, host, very cozy. But in fact, it means that Sweden opened its border for NATO operations, exercises, and drills. Mm -hmm. Well, the same with Finland, and the mm -hmm. same with the NATO uh, countries. Norway was already there since mm -hmm. 49. But Finland and Sweden were actively occupied by different uh, exercises. Host, as I said, Arctic Challenge exercise, which is a cross-border cross-border mm -hmm. operation which goes from Bode in northern Norway, Kallax in northern Sweden, and Rovaniemi in northern Finland. So it, I would say that the north is entirely occupied by NATO. I can mention that Denmark has another role to play for US because Denmark was colonizing Greenland and Greenland and the foreign policy of Denmark, they have still, but Inuits are now independent, they say, but not for foreign policy. So Denmark have been ordered by the US to educate the Inuits in military exercises. And they have also since years uh, very important radar installations in Greenland for national missile defense. And during the Cold War, Greenland hosted nuclear weapons. So Greenland and Denmark uh, in the north has been very close. So the entire north, and I didn't mention Iceland, because Iceland is Oh, most of the time overlooked, but Keflavik was hosting nuclear weapons during the Cold War. But now they have asked, and I think they have already deployed them, nuclear weapons in Keflavik in Iceland. So the entire North is rather crucial for the US because it's so close to Russia, and we shouldn't forget Varda base either. Varda is also in the National Missile Defense. I was there in 1915 and discovered that they have at least four huge radar balls, you know, these big balls, and they are for National Missile Defense. So um, I those... could mention a lot about in the north, but then we come to another chapter <laughs> about Arctic because almost yes. everything here is about the Arctic yes. and the resources. Mm -hmm. One fifth of the oil and one third of the gas is under the ice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I was just going to add there the Arctic Challenge ex exercise. <clears throat> they have been in the north in June. I think it was in the June. I don't remember the exact dates, but there they had their exercises there. And uh, that was uh, the Nordic countries plus the US. Uh, yeah. plus 
the US. So Finland, Sweden, and Norway, Denmark, and the and US. Yeah, there were eight countries, eight yes. countries cooperated yeah, yeah. there, yeah but the ones from the north so so um, and they flew twice a day once in the morning once in the afternoon uh, so <clears throat> and they that, that that was i mean that is sh sh should be disturbing people it does disturb people especially the the um, uh, the Sami people, for instance, and the and the the, the reindeer, and the, it, it is disturbing the the culture of of the north, in, uh, indeed. Um, but I think most people are, well, many people, I'd say, are also positive to what is happening. They say they they think that this is good. And Lule, for instance, which is the base for the, the, the planes there, they are very proud to be, uh, people in Lule are very proud to be uh, the host of, of, this, of this exercise. I can mention that we were arrested when we cut the fence in 2015. We cut mm. the fence, went into the base when they had Arctic challenge exercise. Mm. Mm. Happy we were. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So all of uh, all of these war games, then, as as you're saying, are aimed at Russia, uh, and Russia is being demonized in your newspaper, in your media. Is that true? Up in the north. Uh, yes. In yes. Yeah. Yeah. We were born where they, they feed it the, the mother's milk they feed it they feed the Russian uh, ha hatred against Russia through the well we, we are very much brought up with it even in the north although we are so close. But one interesting thing if I can add I was in northern Norway and you know the Red Army was very extremely popular because they drove out the fifteen thousand. Uh, victims or um, in the war, they drove away the Nazis in 1944, I think, 45. So uh, in when I was there, they were interesting. They had invited a lot of Russians from Murmansk in northern Norway. And they say they, because it's Oslo who started the Cold War, like here in Stockholm, it also is a center for the Cold, the new Cold War. But I was very happy to, uh, to I was in Evenes. I was very happy to, to, uh, to understand that they were not at all uh, afraid of the Russians. On the contrary, it's our friends. It, they are our friends. So see what media can do. So They're earlier, terrible. earlier you both were talking about the Arctic. I think this is really important because uh, as, you know, with the melting of the ice due to climate crisis, uh, you can now get in there and drill for oil and extract natural gas and other resources. Um, so would you then say that much of the reason for these current military exercises are essentially a battle for control of the Arctic between the U.S. and NATO against Russia? Is that what's really driving this growing militarization up in the north, that, that uh, the desire to control the Arctic region? Would Eva, you want to comment on that first? Yeah, I think I think it is uh, one good reason for having for for keeping up and uh, making it very important to have these exercises in the north. Yeah, Agneta, you want you want to comment? Well, more? I am so old, so I recognize that the Cold War started already in '52, and I was crying actually. I was so afraid of the Russians. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming because I think beside these oil and gas in the north, of course you have to have an enemy to get all the oil. Because it's there, actually, the gas and oil most is on Russian soil. It's theirs. But the U.S. is thirsty for oil. We know that. And they are prepared to do anything to grab all oil. But this is not new. It is the second Cold War. And not until I went to Leningrad in 1970, I was about 30 years then. I brought my two children and I was, I, I said, I want to go to Leningrad. It's a big city. 
And then I understood the horrifying, horrifying insight that the Soviet Union had saved us all from Nazis with 27 million died, dead. And you know, I was furious. They have lied to me and I'm still furious. They lie to us all the time, all the time. And it is the military industrial media tralala complex who always want to grab the radio, the TV, uh, everything. So I would say that the media is the culprit in many ways. When yes. I went to Northern Norway and understood that were, they were not grabbed or, or scared for the Russians, I understood something really important that we are modeled to be there because the United States of America they don't want have to have war on their soil, so they want to move it as usual to Europe. And now they are in full swing to, to prepare for that again. And we will not let them do that. Eva, would you like to comment more on this? Yes, I'd, I'd like to see something positive. <laughs> I, I agree with Agneta. I, agree, I totally agree with her. But I just want to do angle everything from another side, telling that we have had very good uh, communication and visits with schools in on the Kola Peninsula. So I think that uh, yes, that has been one very good thing. We have had uh, Russian school people coming to our to my school, and we have been there, and and we have had a lot of exchange. I don't know right now as I have stopped working a couple of years ago, but uh, it has been going on, and that is something which is very positive. Uh, and uh, this, the 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 young people they like it very much, and they uh, they. Uh, they they even say that oh they they look like we do <laughs> <laughs> seventeen year old ones oh they don't have ugly glasses and, and and funny clothes they just look like we do and they they're staying with their with families when 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 we have these exchanges and that is something I just wanted to see <laughs> that there, yeah. there are some 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 nice uh, angles also to this uh, to this uh, hostility uh, there. Are. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Agneta, another question. Uh, of all the changes that you've mentioned, what do you think is the most dangerous for a peaceful development in the world today? Well, if I talk from Swedish point of view, I'm furious. I'm really furious because the U.S. is pressing the Swedish government not to sign the prohibition against nuclear weapons. We are the country that actually, when those who were active, like my Britain, as I mentioned, and all those in the United Nations who worked hardest against nuclear weapons, we were in the forefront. And now we don't even dare to sign uh, uh, the prohibition of nuclear weapons, to get rid of nuclear weapons. This is a way that Mark Brzezinski, you mentioned him, and I think the US embassy, they see too that there are always people here to scare our leaders so they don't dare to sign. There we are. And that is the most important thing, I think. In Sweden, we have to reveal who is behind this stupidity we work hard in the, the peace organization to press the Swedish government to sign. But unfortunately, and I don't know what to do with it, Anne Linde, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and um, Peter Hultqvist, I have to mention their terrible names. They sit in the lab of United States of America. And they are seem to be very proud. Mm. I hope that this Afghanistan debacle, what they had done in Afghanistan and the whole thing that will diminish the US reputation of being a wonderful power because they are cruel. They don't 
care a bit. So we have to get rid. We have to get rid of their uh, power over us. That's my conviction. I mean, so up. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Eva, a last question. Uh, what message would you send to other peace people around the world who might be watching this video from uh, the, the, the increasingly militarized region of northern Sweden where you live? Yeah, well, <laughs> what message would I send? Well, I think that um, uh, we, we also talked about what's going to happen in the future. I think that one big problem in the future is water. And that, that will cause a lot of conflicts, a lot of conflicts in many countries. But I think that um, uh, meeting people, traveling is very good. Traveling is very good. We should travel much more. Uh, I mean, uh, European people travel uh, and African people don't travel much because they don't, they, they, they can't afford it. And uh, uh, American people, uh, they have such a big country, so they very seldom travel to Africa and uh, maybe those who were, have people there. But I think that we should, we should meet more. We shouldn't just be sitting inside. We, uh, we should uh, drink our tea. We should meet more. We should talk more. We should be more open. We shouldn't be so afraid uh, of each other and uh, suspecting each other and, and condemning everybody's religion. And we shouldn't be so condemning. We, we should be more open uh, and let, let people into ourselves and, and also take from other people we should we should be more with each other on a on an easy way. thank you thank you thank you thank you both Agnita and Eva very much uh, and thank you for watching another edition of space alert we'll be back for another show next month in the meantime good luck to you all and please get organized Sing a toast, got to go.